What's up, everyone? Welcome to Pink Villa USA. My name is Shiksha Maithani, aka Bali Girl, and I'll be your host today. Now, I am so pumped to introduce to you our guest, Maitreyi Ramakrishnan. She was recently titled with breakout actor in the Times Magazine's Next 100 Most Influential People. And she plays the lead in the Netflix show Never Have I Ever by Mindy Kaling. She plays the role of Devi, an American Indian teenager struggling with things like the loss of a parent, anxiety, her Indian identity, and just general high school and boy drama. Ma'am, my tray is making some big waves in the industry representing the South Asian community. Please join me in welcoming my tray Ramakrishnan. What's up? How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Welcome. Um, Thank so you. Let's just dive right in. I wanted to talk about how, you know, everyone's talking about this show being so revolutionary. It's really bringing South Asian representation to Hollywood, which is incredible. Some people are praising the show, saying that it really does represent their life and the way that they've grown up, while others say that the show has not really done enough. But either way, it's a game changer. So I kind of wanted to ask you, did you know how important this role was when you got the job? 100%. Like before this, I had no acting experience. And, you know, I was literally just a kid in high school, right? I was 17, still in high school. And that was all I knew at the time. But I knew when this was like, even from the casting call, honestly, I knew this was going to be a big deal because it hasn't been done enough. And for the people who did relate to the show, awesome. I'm so glad you did. And for those who might not have been able to, that explains why this show is so important because it hasn't been done enough. And I don't blame those who can't relate because how could we all, how could we all possibly relate to this one show? It's only one option for us, which shouldn't be the case. We should have multiple options, but it, like you said, it's still a game changer. It's still a step forward. Yes, preach girl, this is the beginning. Um, did this show represent how you grew up as a Desi in the West or not so much? Yeah, I would say, Honestly, like, so Davy's experience is, you know, her being from Sherman Oaks, California, America. I'm in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, right? There's still like not that many differences between that. Yeah. I will say for me, I grew up around a bunch of different cultures and I'm so thankful for that. But with that being said, because there were so many other different cultures that I got to learn from and, you know, understand and know of, that made me think, wait, then what am I? Like being Tamil, who am I then? You know, like what's my culture? Is Tamil the culture? Is it the language only? Or like, you know, I was like a little kid. I didn't necessarily fully understand. And like Davy, I was trying to figure that out. I was trying to figure out where I fit in with my identity as someone who is Tamil. And then also everything else, because you go through a lot in high school, just like Davy did. Yeah, absolutely. So how were you similar to Davy and how are you different? I mean, Davy, of course, is very boy crazy in season one and has all of her boy drama. Yeah. That is not me. Um, okay. Girl juggles two guys. I like to just keep it at a nice zero because love is dead. Um, but other than that, like Davy, of course, like goes off the rails sometimes and has like meltdowns, complete meltdowns. I've been there. And I'm sure a lot of people have, right? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to that idea of being perfect, that perfectionist mentality, yeah, I'm a culprit of that for sure. I like to always try and be perfect as possible. And when I'm not perfect, I like, you know, think I'm just a mess up, whatever. So there's a lot of relatability between myself and Davy, but I think it's just because Davy is so relatable. Hence why not just South Asian girls can relate to her. Everyone from all over the world can. Absolutely. Did you bring some of your own experiences into the role when you were reading the script and trying to prepare? I mean, the writers and Mindy and Lang do such a great job of writing a real story that it's like, how can you not relate to this right off the bat? But I, of course, brought my own experiences when it came to that emotion to execute the whole situation, right? As Davy, you know, going through all of these things that she's juggling because she's juggling a lot. Nice. So um, you kind of touched on this a little bit already, but, you know, the fact the idea of embracing your culture and who you are and where you come from, that's something that Davy really does struggle with. Is that something that you have really struggled with a lot as well? I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't really struggle with it, like in the way of like, do I hate my culture? 
like, no, it was nothing like that. And to be honest, I don't think Davy hates her culture. I think she's confused about where she fits in with her culture, but she's not embarrassed. And I never was embarrassed when I was growing up. I wasn't embarrassed about being Tamil, but I didn't know what it necessarily meant, like at its core to be Tamil. It would just be more like a, oh yeah, I'm Tamil. Like, you know, you just say it, but you didn't know what it meant. You wouldn't necessarily really appreciate it yet. I think that's where Davy's at, and I can relate to that because it took a while to understand what that meant to me and, you know, embrace that. In season one, you deal with a lot of different deep emotions, like losing your father, anxiety, um, identity crisis, having just boy drama, high school drama. So how did you channel those feelings? What helped you? Honestly, it always comes down to asking the questions of like the creative team, the directors, writers, co-creators, Mindy and Lang, like they're the best people to ask those questions to, to understand like, okay, what's the tone of this? Like, where is this coming from? What's the projection for this? But then also, empathizing with Davy's situation. Understand why is she doing the things that she's doing? Why does she think this is a good thing to do? Because she does in her head think she's making the smart choice, right? No one wants to actively make a bad choice and Davy's no exception to that. So it's all about trying to figure out, okay, what was your reasoning? What was the reason, Davy? Because this is a bad choice, but let's figure out the reason why. Okay, now let's talk about Mindy Kaling. What has it been like working with her, having her as a mentor? Oh, she's awesome. I couldn't ask for better. She is an amazing person to talk to, obviously a great boss, but such an awe to be around and work with. Um, okay. And now this show is loosely based on Mindy Kaling's childhood. At least that's what's said. So did she help you kind of shape the character and better understand Davy? Yeah, both her and Lang actually, because, you know, it's based off of both of their lives and, you know, growing up and how it was for them. So they have always like, you know, told me stories about their own life, which I'm really thankful to, you know, be a part of that, you know, storytelling, which is really nice. And to have their trust to know those stories from them themselves. And now this is your first big role. Congratulations again. Now this came out during the pandemic. So everything was shut. You didn't really get to go out and see people who've seen you on screen. How are things different for you now that things are starting to open up? Have people stopped you on the streets? What's that like for you? I mean, not for the most part, cause like most of us been in quarantine, you know, like my family obviously already recognized me, but sometimes in public I get recognized, which is pretty cool, pretty nifty. And it's been awesome to see everything online of the fact that people all over the world are coming to talk about this show and bond over the internet with all of their fan art, fan camps, and I couldn't be more grateful. So cool. Now, what can you tell us about your next project? We've already heard that it's the Netherfield Girls, which is so cool. Can you tell us anything about it? Honestly, not that much because we haven't started filming yet, of course, but it is obviously based off of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. It's a modern adaptation, sort of like, you know, Emma Stone's Easy A kind of vibe. And it's going to be really exciting. I'm really excited to do it. Do you have any other projects on the horizon that you can tell us about? Nothing as of yet. So right now, the greatest project that I can think of is sleeping. <laughs> Fair enough. Spoken like a true teenage girl. Um, joining us now is Richa Morjani. Richa is best known for her role as Kamla in the Netflix show Never Have I Ever by Mindy Kaling, where she plays an Indian who has come to California from India to live with her extended family while working towards a PhD at Caltech. She actually plays Maitreyi's cousin on the show. Please join me in also welcoming Richa Morjani. Hey, Richa, thanks for joining us. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. All right, so I have a couple of questions for both of you. Do you guys have any pre-filming or post-filming rituals that you do? I mean, I don't think so. Do I don't think I have any. I do like every yes, day before do. filming. What, what do I have? You go home and you play video games. That's your post-shooting ritual. Okay, no, no, that's that's all day. That's all day, every day, that's whether we're on set or we're not. That's just how I go. But I will say in the morning, um, I don't like tend to eat like breakfast. I know it's bad. Trust me, I know. But I will always like listen to like the certain playlist that I've got. Like while driving, it's like okay, game time. Let's go. So yeah. What kind of music does it have? Um, it's just like a lot of like it's all like upbeat songs between like, you know, a lot of like I'm thinking like Marina and the Diamonds, but also just you know, it's like upbeat like. 
like heartbreaker kind of like yeah we got this like i can't even tell you because it's not one genre for sure it's like a lot a lot of like new miley cyrus with her new like punk aesthetic <laughs> okay what about you richa I, uh, depending on what time I have to start shooting, um, I normally, I mean, my morning ritual every day is to get up and meditate. Uh, my three loves my meditation music. Every every time she calls me- It sounds me, like Minecraft music. music. Your meditation music sounds like Minecraft music. So it's funny. Well, maybe it is Minecraft music, but I actually had a, a playlist that I was listening to um, before shooting specifically for Never Have I Ever, which was a Thummel song playlist. I don't know any of the names, so don't ask, but they're, they're amazing. I love them. I love Thummel music. Wow. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> Tell us about the funniest day you guys have had on set behind the scenes together. Together? I never have fun with Richa. She She's so exhausts. boring. <laughs> she exhausts me. She's <laughs> annoying. No, okay. Um, I'm going to say this because this is never going to ever be known if I don't say it right here, right now. But in season two, in season two, there was this really awesome line where Davey is basically saying that, you know, it's too early for Kamala to think about getting married to Prashant. And she's trying to think of like reasons why. And then she's like, yeah, like we don't even know what his last name really is. Like, what if it's something weird? Like butt raisin or something <laughs> and then now we just thought it was like so funny Richard loves how I say butt raisin so oh, we just call it butt raisin that's our yeah. nickname for Richard. but the awkward thing is that they ended up editing that part out of the show so now nobody will understand why we call each other butt raisin except for people us. are just gonna and think that like, we I don't know we're into some weird stuff I don't know it's not never gonna make it you know what hopefully if a season three comes around that joke will make its day do you guys help each other get into that vibe and in that moment? Because it sounds like you guys are having fun on set. So how do y'all do that? Do y'all help each other out? I mean, I think we just feed off each other's energy, honestly. That's it's what I was going to say. I mean, honestly, like, Richard is such a solid scene partner. And I know it's always going to go well because Richard will always push me to, like, you know, give new things, right? And I'll do the same for her. But she's also such a respectful scene partner when, let's say it is a more emotional scene. She like gives you that space to like do your thing. But also if it's like a fun scene, it's like, okay, now let's play. Let's have like a bunch of fun and see what we can do. So it's always like a really fun time filming with Richa. Also Richa's like the goat. She's actually really cool. Davy's resentment for Kamala couldn't be further from what I am to like Richa. <laughs> Totes no, agree, except, except she definitely- agree. <laughs> what did you say? To a degree? I said totes agree. Totes. I, I heard, okay, so clearly, um, but we still will like go at each other. Like yeah. oh. she still like she still gives me friend friend punches that are not very friendly Dude, at all. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Do you bruise her? Voltail, word. I don't say a word. Punches, but they hurt. <laughs> hmm. Let's just say I have apparently a strength that I am not aware of. Not aware of her own strength. Just, I'm not like trying to hurt people. I'm just like, yo, that was awesome. And they're like, dude, like, okay, can you not? There has been points where damage has been done. Uh, Purna does not like high-fiving me anymore. That like scene in season one is very real. She doesn't that, like- That actually happened. <laughs> doesn't like those aggressive high-fives. Um, definitely may have potentially possibly bruised Darren. Um, but it's okay. <laughs> so it's okay. Everybody, wa everybody walks out of there with bruises from you. <laughs> no, it's because like, I'm just like, yo, what up? Like, she's just crazy. a woman I like never know. ever hug people too. Like Richard, you know this, like I rarely, rarely give hugs. This is how I show my affection. It's like, like Davey says, it's a friendship punch. They need and body she, armor around you basically. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I'm around her, I'm like, hi. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, have you guys gotten any responses from India? Um, I know that they've gotten a chance to see season one as well. So what has that been like? Fan messages, followings, just comments, etc. Everyone's so hyped. I'm like, I'm so thrilled. Everyone is so excited for like, like for the people in India who have seen the screeners of season two, they're so excited to like see the fan responses and just get it out there because 
I think too that season two is better than season one because like all the drama, all the like serious wholesome moments, the funny moments are all heightened, and we get to see new characters that help push the story forward. And there's even a scene in season two where Nalini goes to India, so that's going to be really exciting, I think, for people in India. But yeah, honestly, we had no idea how people were going to receive the show before season one came out, and we were just so happy that. Not only did people like it here, but they liked it all over the world, and especially, you know, in India, we were really conscious of how people would be receiving it there, and we're just so grateful for all the love and support that we've gotten from there because that's so important for us to be able to continue telling these stories here in Hollywood to have the support from the global South Asian community. All right, well, thank you guys. Let's play some games. I want to start off with a game to see how well do you guys actually know each other. So I'm calling <laughs> it the best cousin game. All right. Good. I love that. the best cousin. <laughs> I'm gonna win. Can you win at this game? Very competitive. Both of no you one. are. <laughs> she is. Oh, okay. Let's see. So whoever answers first, that's fine, and then the other one answers after. All right. Um, okay. So if you were to describe each other in one word, what would it be? I think Richa would first. In this is hear me out. Richa would first in her head think of something like. She's such a like a dork or like a nerd, and then she would say, "But you know, she's actually such a confident young woman," and like go into like her cheesy stuff. But like first instinct would okay, be, she's definitely heard me say these this in interviews. <laughs> no, this is like when you ever give me like pep talks, and you're like, you're so like confident, and you're just so strong, blah blah blah, and then you also call me butt raisin. So, <laughs> so what, is that yeah. accurate, Richa? That's like literally exactly what I would have said. She's a loser, but the best type of loser. And she's so confident and she has such a good head on her broad shoulders. It's just an inside <laughs> joke from season two. Um, <laughs> and she's just amazing. But uh, okay, what would I, I don't know how you, you would describe me also as like, Someone who does not understand, this is not one word, but she always makes fun of me because I like, don't know pop culture references. Like she had to teach me who Megan the, Megan the, Megan the Stallion is. Like oh, Megan the. She, yeah, so she gets really <laughs> irritated with me when I don't know these things. So um, yeah, she, I guess she would probably describe me first as like uncultured. And then <laughs> she would probably no. describe me as, um, no. You don't think I would say something nice about you? I do, I just don't know like what you would, okay, fine, hold on, hold on. You'd probably say that I'm the biggest sister you never had. That's not one word though. No, but that is like what I always do say. That is what I would say. Yeah. Right. You are my oh, LA big sister. Yeah. You both aced it. Now, how would if she if she could only wear one outfit every day, what would it be? Sweatshirt. Sweatpants. Yeah. We completed. <laughs> <laughs> completing other as a whole sweatsuit. Sweatsuit. Oh man. It's true though. It's in a sweatsuit. <laughs> uh, if, she, if she could only meet one person alive or dead, who would it be? Ooh. Oh, oh I, I know. I know. I know. Well. Steve Carell for me. You're right. And then Jojo Gomez. Oh, oh that's a really good one. She's one of my favorite dancers. So, oh, good. Amazing. I like that. And what's the first celebrity she's ever met? Mindy Kaling, probably. And then, I don't know about you, but like, Mindy Kaling? Because your first probably job also, was on the Mindy Kaling. Project as Ed Helms' girlfriend, right? So I would assume for you, the big celebrity is also Mindy. Yeah, at least here in Hollywood, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm thinking Hollywood. Okay, yep. common ground. Love it. All right, next up, I know you guys have never played this before, but let's play Never Have I Ever, shall we? Yeah. Taking mm -hmm. Daisy food to school for lunch. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Totally. Did your uh, friends steal it from you or not so much? No. No. I should sh not it. shake my head. <laughs> um, really? Fallen asleep in public. Yeah, Water, we're, in a, like, we're in a bindi to school. Oh, oh actually I have, I have. Yeah? Have y'all worn- Literally like a costume. <laughs> okay, have y'all worn like a full Indian get up to school? Like for a regular day of school? Nah. No, just for any reason, like how Davy did. No? Oh, see like 
those kind of like function things like they would happen at other people's schools like no when, but like, like after your school friends i one time freshman year of high school my halloween costume was a homemade Miss India. I, I I was Miss India for Halloween. So I made a sash that said Miss India and wore a full on lenga to school and a crown. It was awesome. It was awesome. That's amazing. I like to dress up as video game characters for Halloween. Fair That's enough. Cool. Like and I uh, dropped a book on the ground. And then like been really uh, like scared about what yeah. the repercussions would be. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm really scared. My mom always taught me if you like step on a book, like you do anything disrespectful to a book, you got to kiss it. And yeah. when my brother was like in kindergarten, he might, he, he won't care that I'm saying this story. When my brother was in kindergarten and a kid stepped on a book, he like yelled at him to kiss that book. And this like white kid did not understand why this brown kid was yelling at him to kiss that book. It was weird. But you know, I respect my brother for the grind. I respect it. Wow. Yeah, that I mean, that's something that I feel like when we were kids, we were taught these things. So we expected that to be the same rule for everybody. So if you had like a white friend who didn't follow that rule, we're like, what's wrong with you? God is going to yeah. punish you. Especially when you're like a kid, you like, you don't know that like, that's not a universal thing. I think it's pretty like, I think it's pretty like reasonable. Like books are education and knowledge and knowledge is power. Yeah, absolutely. You know? No, it makes sense to us, but it's it's hard when your American friends don't get it. <laughs> and last one got secretly drunk at a Daisy party while underage. Oh no, there's too many aunties, bro. Oh whoa, you guys, sorry. I'll Come leave. on, my J. You're also like, you are also currently underage. So let's. No, just... I am in Canada. Well, not now. I'm in New York, but I'm Canadian. So you have time. Uh -huh. what's, the, what's the drinking age in Canada? 19 because you know you can I did not know drink that. before you can sign up for the military america i don't understand because that makes sense <laughs> all right um thank you for playing our never have i ever game um and That's then good. before i let y'all go i did want to ask about your dance sheila kidivani which we just released which was amazing yeah. by the way i have to say that wow uh so how did that start what got that going Gertrude, do you want to explain or do you want me okay. to explain yeah. okay you're pointing at me yeah because i would totally know what this is <laughs> on scenes <laughs> new okay uh well i will explain so my birthday December 28th, 2001, AKA my train miss, you know, like Christmas, my train miss. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So my birthday was rolling around, right? So I decided, cause I was like in LA while we were filming this, I decided to text Richa and say, Richa, I know what I want for my birthday from you. <laughs> and Richa was like, uh, okay. And I was like, just choreograph a dance for us to do. Like I didn't pick a song, I didn't like, do anything like that. I was just like, oh, you, you specifically said Sheila. Did I say that? Yeah, you were like, I want to do a dance with this song. No, no, no. I didn't say to like get it professionally shot or anything. Oh. Or you, like just said, I wanna, you just said, I want to learn a dance to my name is Sheila. Yeah, I was like, can you just choreograph a dance to this song? And then like, can you teach me? And like, we can like do it together, right? I don't care if it's like, we do it in front of people. Like it could just be for like us to know and mm -hmm. like do it like, for fun when we're alone i don't know i didn't think anything like big you were like half joking about it too like you hadn't like fully I wasn't joking. It. oh i thought you were joking i wasn't joking i just wanted to dance because the thing yeah. is a lot of my cousins like they don't dance and like do that like intensely and i know rich is like a really good dancer also i'm not like someone who dances and i'm not an intense dancer but my cricket a costume dance in season two pretty fire but, so is yeah. that one. He was fire in this one. Total fire. But for real, like, I'm not a dancer, but it's like, it's like a fun thing to do, you know? Like, I'm not professional with it, but I enjoy just music right. and grooving out. So I was like, okay, Richard knows how to do this. Richard can teach me something cool and, you know, it'll be fun for Richard and I to like bond over. So that was how it started. That's amazing. So how and long does it take it? 
I'm so glad she did that because um, she texted me that and I took it very seriously. I was like, okay, we're going to be practicing on these dates. Not not the dates, but I like literally laid it out for her. I was like, I'm going to get us costumes. I'm going to hire a videographer. This is going to be like, I'm not going to go easy on the choreo. Like we're going to, we're going to do this for real. And she was like, I'm so down. And I was so, I was just like so impressed by her enthusiasm about it and her willingness to just like do whatever. And so that was really inspiring for me. And it was like a pandemic. I hadn't danced and I'm a dancer. I hadn't danced since before COVID. And I was like really missing dancing. So I was just so happy that she brought this up. It was another chance for me to start dancing again. And it was a chance for us to actually get to bond and hang out outside of set. Because especially while we were shooting this season, you know, with COVID and everything, we didn't really get to hang out that much on set, you know, besides being in scenes together. So it was, it was so much fun for us to do this. We probably had like, I don't know, four or five, maybe six practices. I think um, more than five. that. I think more than that. One hundred percent more than that. Not it was somewhere hard. between like it was like somewhere between five to ten practices of like a few hours. A lot each. of I'm gonna be honest. A lot of practice is us just talking first for like majority of the time. Like if we had like an hour long booking of a studio, we would talk for forty five minutes and then dance for, for fifteen, <laughs> and then talk after for two more hours. Wow. But that's what made it so much fun. Like we, cause we wouldn't have been able to have that time together on set. Yeah, so we I'm wouldn't have, we wouldn't have. Proud older cousin. all I my just, effort. I, don't get me wrong. My whole heart was in that dance, but <laughs> I still look like a clown. <laughs> no, she did an amazing, amazing. Like I've showed the video to a few of my friends and I'm like, she's not a dancer, but I taught this to her and they're like, what are you talking about? Like, she's really good. So yeah. you killed it. So you guys you. both nailed it, honestly. Such an amazing video. Um, well, thank you guys so much for being with us here at Pink Villa. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to us. And uh, congratulations on season two. Thank Woo. you so much.